Hey everybody, it's TJ Leasley, and no fancy introduction here, but I would like to welcome you and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to spend a little bit of that time with me. Now, I know you lead a very busy life and your time is valuable, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, I want to talk to you guys today a little bit about internet marketing. Some of you may be new to internet marketing and some of you may be a little more advanced, but everything we cover today will apply to anyone no matter what your skill level. That being said, there are certain hurdles or let's say obstacles or maybe even benchmarks that we all need to overcome in order to make it online. So today I'm going to be covering the five benchmarks that we need to overcome in order to reach our goals online. Now these are not the complete list of every single hurdle, but it does cover the five big benchmarks. And without these benchmarks, um, it's, it's highly likely that you're not going to succeed. So I'm going to be approaching this video today as if we are all still working a horrible nine to five job and we're looking into this whole idea of internet marketing and, and really to have a look and see what it takes to create a business online. Now the reason I want to do this is because the first two steps are extremely important and most people who have ever tried internet marketing and failed, failed because they never really did steps one and two. And after they failed, they never even really thought to look at steps one and two as the reason for their failure. So again, I want to start out as if we are looking at the idea of what it would take to start a business online. Now whether you're a beginner or you're not, your online business will fall somewhere along these five benchmarks. And I'm hoping after this video, you will know exactly the points that you're having trouble with so you can then work on these points. All right, so let's get going. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Benchmark number one. Okay, so benchmark number one is market research. Now, I know a lot of you just jumped out of your chair out of excitement and sheer enthusiasm about this first benchmark. But to tell you the truth, guys, market research could be the most important step to the whole process. And to tell you the truth, most people just slide right over this point. Now, why is this step so important? Well, we're trying to figure out two things. First one is we're trying to find a current market to sell in if we're brand new to internet marketing. Or the next one is we're trying to evaluate if our current market, your current business or whatever niche you're in currently is going to produce results online. It's very, very important, guys. Market research is the starting point uh, that most people, again, don't even do or never even thought about doing. Now, just to let you know, not all markets are created equal, and this is probably the main reason for most failure online. Now, when it comes to me and researching a product, or if I was going to do a product online, there's five main points that must be present in order for me to even consider testing the market, uh, let alone just diving right in and making products for that particular area. So let's go ahead and cover this criteria that's, that's very important when it comes to uh, picking your market. So the first one here is, are they passionate about this subject? Guys, this is really important. Now, I have an example here for you that kind of lets you know how passionate uh, uh, how passionate markets work. So, not a lot of you may know this about me, but I used to be a professional golfer, played the mini tours for a really long time. So, if you know a golfer, if you yourself are a golfer, if you're married to a golfer, you will know exactly and how insanely passionate we can be about this very simple game. Um, golf is a great example where you have very, very passionate people. People that play golf and that are passionate about golf are willing to take anywhere from four to six hours out of their, their weekend to chase a white golf ball around. So that would be a very good example of uh, you know, the first criteria that you'd be looking for. Now the next one here is, is there a lot of them? So not, it's not good enough to just have a passionate uh, you know, client base out there, a potential client base there has to be a lot of them also. So you can have the most passionate uh, group out there, but if there's only 10 of them, it's not gonna translate very well into selling things online. So, you know, we have to have a very passionate market and there has to be a lot of them. The next one is, can you reach them online? So, it seems pretty basic here, guys, but you know, it's very important if you're gonna start an online business, you're gonna have to be able to reach them online. So, the next one here is, are they currently buying? Now, a lot of people get nervous if there's competition, but when you're looking at um, you know, finding things to sell online or if your product's gonna sell online, you wanna see that people are currently buying your product. It's something that's already out there, people are already having success with it, and it's proven as an online marketing uh, you know, product that can be sold. And the last one here, guys, I'm not gonna hit it real hard, but it's distribution. Not everything is gonna translate well, especially if you sell something in bulk. You know, if you're selling one-off things of a bulk product and you're going to get eaten alive in your distribution, you're not going to have any profits. So again, uh, distribution is a good thing to look at depending on what kind of product you're selling out there. Uh, those are the five I definitely look at and they all must be present before I even think about selling it online. Alright, so let's get into benchmark number two. 
Now, once we've figured out the market that we're going to sell in, and we have all the five there that is gonna make it a very good market, a very profitable market, now we need a product to sell. So, which leads us to the next one here. So, product research. So, again, I know you're jumping out of your seat. There's more research to be done. This is the golden ticket, super easy push button, uh, online marketing success, but it's very, very important, guys. And research is gonna be, if you do your proper research, it's gonna save you a lot of problems later. So, that being said, you're gonna be doing research on one of two things. You're new to internet marketing, you found a market, but now you need to find a product, and you're looking for a product which you need to sell, or again, you've done the research on your existing business, you find out, okay, this market's okay to move it online, so now you wanna do the product research and see what would be the best product to, to put out into the market. Now, that being said, let's say you do a bunch of research and you find out that your online business isn't necessarily a business that is going to translate over in internet marketing very well or the product's not going to move over online very well. I don't want you guys to get frustrated and here's the reason why. There are tons of different products for you to find and sell online. Don't worry about it. There is always something to find. There is no shortage of products to sell online. Now, product research is a very important step and there are many tools to help us online but again, uh, I don't have all the time to cover it in this video, but I do want to point this out. Now, the last one here is in the benchmark number two is if you have your market and you want to create your own product, where most of the, you know that's where you make the most amount of money, then you would need to know how to do a product creation. So uh, that pretty much covers benchmark number two. Okay, moving right along, we are now approaching benchmark number three. So we found our market, we now have a product that we want to sell, but now we need to move it online. So benchmark number three is the website. Now, this used to be a major sticking point. Uh, it was a lot harder to get a website designed back in the day. You know, if you had either had to know someone that uh, did web development or you had to have a buddy or you had to outsource it for a bunch of money, but it's really not the case anymore. Facebook has made it easy for people to bring their business online. If you're just starting out, I highly recommend using fan pages, and here's exactly why fan pages work. Facebook fan pages give you instant credibility. Now, how that works is basically, just the sheer fact alone that you're using a Facebook fan page, something most people have no idea how to use, is going to give you instant credibility with your competition. And also, if someone's going to purchase something from you online, most likely, if they're savvy enough to do that or if they're, they're using the internet in that sort of way, they most likely have a Facebook account. That being said, that's where they spend a lot of their time, that's where they hang out online, that's where they socialize online. So um, again, if you have a, a business presence within Facebook, it's going to give you instant credibility with your potential customers. Next one here is fan pages are great for picking up free traffic from Google and the other search engines. Now, I don't want to get too technical here, but I do want to let you know that the fan page design, how they're designed to work, works great as far as um, picking up free traffic from Google and the other search engines. And all they really need is a little bit of help from you and you can really start you know, ranking well within Google. Next one here is Facebook is becoming one of the top search engines. Well, just like YouTube or Google, Facebook is a search engine and a lot of people are starting to use Facebook to do searches. So the only way to show up in a Facebook search is to have a Facebook fan page. So that fact alone uh, should be reason enough to open up a fan page for your business. Next one here is you can reach millions of people, capture emails, and further promote your products. Now guys, Facebook fan pages is one of the best lead generating entities out there. They're great for contacting millions of people. Uh, they're really great for capturing emails, and uh, again, you can further promote your products. Next one here is you can create custom tabs like product tabs. Next one here is you can sell right from your fan page, pretty self-explanatory. Next one here is fan pages can go viral. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you every single niche market that is out there is going to go viral on Facebook. It just isn't the case. But if you do have a product and the content is great and people are searching for it, fan pages are great to really create a viral effect around your business. And the last one here, guys, your competition has no idea how to use them, giving you a huge advantage. So again, that's some of the reasons why Facebook fan pages work, and I highly recommend uh, if you're getting you know, started online or if you want to bring more online presence, definitely Facebook fan pages are a way to go. Well, now that we have a website, it's now time for the most important ingredient to the site which leads us into benchmark number four. Benchmark number four is all about list building. Now, I'm sure you've heard this a million times that you need to start capturing emails to build a list. And if you haven't, you're new to internet marketing, let this be the first time ever, and now you're gonna hear it a million times after this going forward. Now, here's why you wanna capture emails. A very small amount of traffic will ever buy from you the first time they visit your site. Now, typically they'll say you no know, three times before they actually buy something from you. 
Couple this with the fact that a very small amount of people ever revisit your site, and it becomes very clear we must capture their email. And basically all it does is gives us a chance to sell them our products and services later after we build a relationship with them. Now list building is critical to your online success, and we need a tool to help us build a list. And that tool is called the landing page, squeeze page, and some people like to call it the opt-in tab. Now they all mean the same thing, but I'm a little bit old school, so I still call them squeeze pages. And I believe the more proper term may be uh, landing pages now, but here's what a typical squeeze page looks like. So as you can see, we have the classic headline at the top, then we have the video over to the bottom left, which explains exactly why they should enter the email over to the right. And then over to the right, we have the three arrows pointing to the place where they can put in their email and then they can click there for instant access. Now the reason squeeze pages work so well is because it gives the visitor one single choice. They can either opt in or leave. They have to make a decision. There's actually nothing else for them to do. They can't get distracted by the website. They can't get lost in your website. There's, they have to make a decision. Now that's why I still like to call it a squeeze page because you're lightly squeezing them to make a decision. They either, they either have to opt in and take what you're giving them or they have to back out. So that's the tool we use to capture emails, but let's talk real briefly here on how to capture emails. Now the first thing to know is that people consider their email valuable. Therefore you have to exchange something of value for it. Now I personally try to give away way more than what is needed to make sure the traffic joins my list. Now you must work out some kind of free giveaway. Now I have five classic examples here. I'm sure you've seen a couple of these before, but five ways to capture emails. Now the first one is video training. Uh, video training works great because if someone's searching in a particular niche, they're looking for some sort of information about something, video works great, it has a high conversion rate, and, and it works really well. Uh, if you don't have the ability or you're not confident in your abilities to shoot video, uh, the free report still works great. We use free reports. Uh, the next one down here we have the blueprint of the process. This can be in a PDF file. So if you're selling some sort of process or some sort of way of doing something, you can put it in a blueprint. Uh, webinars work great uh, for capturing emails. You know, if someone's going to, you know, be interested in the topic that you're having a webinar about, typically they have to enter their email and then you send confirmation to them. And uh, the next one here we have is the newsletter. And the newsletter is still a very, very easy and powerful way to start capturing emails. So that pretty much rounds out the top five. Uh, there's many other ways, but that definitely will get you started in the right direction. And that leads us to the last benchmark, which is benchmark number five. Now benchmark number five is very, very, very important to your online success. It's probably the most talked about and least understood subject when it comes to internet marketing, and it has everything to do with traffic. Now I could talk for days on how to generate traffic online, all the different tools that we have to help generate leads, but I wanna cover what I believe to be the two most important parts to traffic. And until I really understood these and how to use them, I was not making any money online. Now, here's the two factors. The first one is you can buy your traffic or you can get your traffic for free. Now, here's where most people get it wrong and give up in frustration. Most people, like myself, and I started out this way, start their online business around free traffic. Now, they try everything under the sun, every way possible to generate free traffic, and it just doesn't work. Now, there's many factors to this and reasons why, but the main one is just because you're starting out. In order to generate free traffic, the search engines are set up in such a way that it takes time to develop. So typically, one will give up in frustration long before this occurs. Now, the first thing you realize is there really isn't such a thing as free traffic once you're frustrated. You come to realize that there's a lot of work that needs to be done to generate this free traffic, so either you outsource and pay, pay someone to help generate the free traffic, or you spend your blood, sweat, and tears studying and training and trying to figure out how exactly to do this. Now, once you know how to find the most highly targeted traffic online for cheap, now you're in business. Now you can start capturing these leads to further promote your products and services and then sell your stuff to them later after you generate a relationship with them. This is where my business started to take off, guys. This is where most people get it wrong. If you're just starting out online, the fastest and easiest way is to pay for your traffic, but the key is you have to know exactly where and how to find the cheapest traffic online. Now, once you master traffic, things really start to get fun because now it's all about just running your business. You are now um, you know, watching what is converting. You're working on your conversion rates. You're trying to figure out the best way to convert this traffic into leads and from there into paying customers. Well, that's all I have for you guys for video number one. And uh, here's where you guys get to get involved. 
As all of you are somewhere along this timeline, I want to know which benchmark you need the most help with, and that's what I'll be covering in the next video. So if you'd like me to cover something, just leave your comment below, and I'm going to cover the one that gets the most response. Again, guys, that's all I have for video number one. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed delivering the information to you guys. Again, my name is TJ Leasley. Don't forget to leave your comment below, and we'll see you in the next video.